Hey, in this video, you will see a registry tweet that you can apply on your system in order to reduce your latency theoretically. This is not so much something that can give you more FPS. Uh, and for this video, I didn't test anything related with the FPS because those types of tweaks that I test are commonly used to reduce your latency, not so much to improve the FPS. So let's discuss more about this registry. The registry location is this local machine, system, car control set, control power. And by default, it's enabled. The name of this value key is the VEN processor enabled. You can find this registry, you can find this key in Windows 10 and Windows 11. I don't know about older versions. Anyways, theoretically, that what is suggested is to set this to zero and disable this option. For now, we'll give it uh, enable. And that's the concept. You disable this option and theoretically you can get some performance. This um, mechanism, if we can say uh, that is a mechanism, uh, this thing uh, trying to keep a balance between performance and power save. So it's very useful for a laptop user that he needs to keep his battery life longer. But if you're uh, a hardcore or you have a PC, it's suggested to disable this power save option as we do for many other stuff. So let's deep dive on this uh, mechanism. So about the event processor, what is it? When the event processor is enabled, it helps manage power events more efficiently by processing them in a way that optimizes power usage. This can be particularly useful for systems that need to balance performance with power consumption, such as laptops or tablets. The registry location for this is HK Local Machine, System, Current Control Set, Control, Power. We have two options to disable this uh, mechanism or Keep it enabled as it is the default. Now let's discuss about the capturing and analysis method that I followed for this video. In capture the latency, I took 10 samples of 5 seconds each for each game. So the sum is 20 samples. In conditions, the test started after 5 minutes from the system boot, nothing unnecessary in background. I did that and I followed this procedure in order to keep the system stable because when you boot your machine uh, many drivers many services starting during uh, the boot time so if you start your uh, your tests uh, instantly you may see uh, unstable stuff and the results not gonna be very accurate so for that reason i follow this procedure my test machine is with windows 10 Enterprise latest version, the latest GPU driver, my GPU, my CPU, my monitor, and the tools WPT, FrameView, and CapFrameX. In the game conditions in Fortnite, native resolution, DirectX 12, and the lowest graphic settings. In CS2, native resolution, default rendering mode, and lowest graphic settings. So let's deep dive on the results in Fortnite. I tested four different drivers, the main drivers that I care more about, that I think they can get effect from this uh, change. And especially, I, do, I chose those drivers, first of all, because they are very important for the games. For instance, the DirectX or the AMD driver, they work uh, when you play a game. And also, I took some other drivers that are core drivers of the operating system. Anyways, as you see, we have ten, seven different metrics. You will see later uh, which is the best option. As you see, we have many metrics, many different numbers. The concept is to see the lower numbers in different cases. Some metrics are better when we disable this option, some others when we have enabled this option. If you pause now the video, you can see uh, the differences further. The MD driver. As we see, again the same concept, some things are better, some things are worse. The Entos kernel, of course, and the WDF driver. Also, we have the CPU precise, the utilization by threads, a very important thing. And we focus on Fortnite executable file 
on the Fortnite game actually. And we have some metrics, as you see we have many metrics, because I wanted to have a full, a completely picture of uh, the thread times uh, during my capture uh, in Fortnite. So again, we follow the same concept, some metrics are better, some metrics are worse accordingly uh, the case if it is enabled or disabled this mechanism. So, this is the important part, the summarize, the high percentage means it's better. So, on this case, when we disable event processor, it was slightly better for some metrics and for some other metrics it was better to when we have it the default state. So, it depends what which metric are most important for you and which driver is most important for you. Some drivers are was work were worked better when I had this option disabled. Some other drivers worked better when I had this option enabled. So it's up to you what you will choose. But as you see, we haven't any huge improvement. We see the, the percentage is almost 50-50. So we can't say that we have something incredible. So I would I, we could say that we see almost zero difference. In CS2, again the same concept, the Direct kernel, the MD driver, the Entos kernel driver, and the WDF driver. The CPU precise utilization by threads, and again we have the summarize. On this case, again we have very close percentage, again almost 50-50, but on this case the winner is the event processor enabled, so the default state, it's better than the disable. So you now you will ask me, what is really better uh, to use? In my opinion guys, I would say that it doesn't really matter, this specifically, this registry specifically, from the test that I did with uh, Windows Performance Analyzer, I can't say that we have something huge. Uh, the old metrics here are very very close we can't say that we have something incredible and we're talking about microseconds so i don't know how we can say that we have improvement so if someone say to you that this registry will eliminate the levels of your system it lies to you from what i see yes we have some improvement on some cases we haven't some improvement on some other cases so it depends from the point of view that you see the old things. So, should you enable, should you disable this option? Likely, it doesn't really matter. It's something that uh, it's very, very small. The differences when you want to see something huge in, in terms of CPU. So, what I say, test. Of course, you may see improvement. You may see not. You may not feel at all this improvement. And it, it probably depends the game, it depends your CPU. There are many parameters that you can that you must consider before you uh, proceed to disable this option, but it doesn't really matter in my opinion if you disable or not. It's also a kind of placebo. On some cases, you may disable this option and play a game and you feel so smooth everything, but in reality it's the same thing. But you have inside your mind that you see an incredible improvement anyways uh, i talked enough test and see tell me your thoughts in comments anyways uh, thanks for watching guys